Hey guys, Josh back with another video, and today we're going to be covering a pretty specific theoretical topic. Um, we're just going to be discussing check down lines and single raise pots, big blind versus button. Um, this is a line I personally probably play more often than most. Um, you know, generally, the higher the rake structure, the tighter the big blind defense should be. Granted, uh, most people are, e even regs are, are defending um, significantly too wide out of the big blind uh, as a call. Uh, the higher the rake, generally, the big blind should be playing uh, much closer to three better fold than like low rake or no rake structures. Um, you know, the, the big blind range here in theory, um, like stuff like Jack nine off or, or King nine off, King 10 off, um, or, you know, should be three bet at a decent clip, but, uh, you know, and stuff like a seven off, a six off should be, uh, played as a three bet a decent amount of the time, um, just because of the high rake, um, you know, basically the, the higher the rake, you know, the more you lose going post. So, um, you know, the EV of a call just goes down. So granted, yeah, um, regs are probably not three betting or well, are certainly not three betting, three betting enough out of the big blind, but, um, you know, generally, uh, they, they should be tighter. Um, so what ends up happening is the higher the rake structure, um, the less of an equity advantage the imposition player has over the big blind. Um, and what that means is you should be betting the flop less often in general. Um, there are specific boards where uh, it, it becomes a bit more important, um, specifically ace high boards. Um, are a great example. Um, so, yeah, it's it's quite important if you're if you're playing mid stakes to uh, get pretty comfortable with delay lines. Um, so today we'll we'll just talk about the check down lines on a couple different boards. Um, so, a side boards are special in a sense that if you have top pair, your pair needs no protection from overcards um, and your opponent will have, I, I mean, the the rank most common in both ranges and pretty much every configuration is going to be an ace. Um, so what this yields is generally, you know, just universally smaller bets and, and more checks. Um, basically just less money going in on the flop. Um, there, there are exceptions, of course, uh, you know, double Broadway is high boards. Uh, you'll, you'll see quite a bit of big betting, but that's, you know, a totally different concept. Um, anyhow, uh, you know, on a board like this, if you have like ace four, ace five, ace seven or something, um, you, you know, you're not too keen on, on putting, uh, on building a pot, so to speak. Um, especially when you consider, uh, the expectation you get by checking back and letting your opponent probe into you. Um, one thing I definitely notice at, at mid stakes is, uh, players just value betting on earlier streets way too often. So if the flop goes check, check in a spot like this and the turns like an eight or something. Um, ASEX shouldn't be probing that often. Um, like even, even these stronger ASEX are just checking and, and letting their opponent bet. Uh, the, the, the reason this happens is just because your opponent still has a significant equity edge. Um, even, even after they, they check back, um, so just just because your opponent checks back doesn't mean their range is uh 
devoid of a top pair just means they don't have a hand they want to build a big pot with. Um, so the delay lines are, are going to be played quite often. Um, face a check here and now um, you'll see like this this lower ace x you know value betting and then you know 8x is going to value bet um, just for protection um, and then it, because imposition still has quite an equity advantage so um, they're, they're liberated to bet somewhat thin for value um, you know they can just delay uh, you know, delay a hand like ace nine, ace ten, um, and and feel confident they have the best hand. But but again, like even these lower ace x are just checking down to the river because again, your hand doesn't need any protection. You would rather just let your opponent make a pair and then value bet the river or uh, allow your opponent to to bluff into you. Um, it the only hands that that really want to put money in in this turn delay line. Um, you know, or the stronger ace x like ace jack plus, um, or two pair. Um, and, and the eight really is just betting for protection. Um, made the turn like a queen. I mean, the the higher the card, the the less out of position should be probing. Um, just because this is a card that hits the imposition range quite often, so they should be betting a bit more often. Um, well, excuse me. On a, on a Broadway card, they, they won't be betting more often, but their average bet size is going to be significantly larger. Um, so they're so when they do bet, they're, they're putting in a lot of money for you. Um, so here, um, similar concept going on, like you're not going to be value betting a queen here because a queen doesn't really need much protection. Um, and now, since you make so many more strong hands on a queen. Um, you, you have a lot more protection. So, um, and out of position doesn't make two pair on a queen very often at all. So, uh, you can you can really size up when you have when you have a good ace and just go for two big streets. So it'd be like pot call, maybe a deuce. Um, now you can comfortably like pot the river with like. Yeah, like ace jack plus, even ace ten. Um, so uh, it's not. It, it it's just a, like this is just a spot where um, you're you're just going to press the nut advantage in your range and and just go for two big streets. But it, you know, on something like like an eight, um, you're just going a bit smaller, so you can a value bet an eight, but also your opponent makes two pair with even offsuit hands like ace eight off and they have all the ace eight suited. Um, so your average best size is just gonna go down. Um, so uh, one reason I, I play these lines, um, especially on high boards, uh, probably significantly more often than, than most regs is, is just because they, they value bet uh, way too thin on Earlier, so so like if it goes check check, they they just value about the turn way too often, um, like they probe the turn with with made hands way too often. So, um, it, just betting in general significantly significantly more often than they should. Um, like on an A, there there so many regs are just like pure probing, like Ace Nine Plus here. Um, so, you know, a general fundamental of poker is. If you're going to, if your opponent's going to put money in for you, um, there, there's your incentive to bet. Your incentive to bet goes way down, um, even if it's by a small margin, because you're getting your opponent to bet into you with weaker hands than a good portion of your, of your made hands, and they're they also bluff into you. Um, both of which are, are great. Um, so if you have it like on a six, three, two tone, that this is a really good example because there, there are so many runouts where, you know, if you have like 
uh, you know, Ace Jack or Ace Ten. Um, that I guess like Ace Ten, Ace Nine would would kind of be the best examples, where you're going to have the best Ace X the vast majority of the time, um, but there are so many runouts where you're generally going to want to avoid um, putting a ton of money in. Um, you know, so many straight and flush runouts. Uh, so after it goes check check, and your opponent's going to probe into you too often um, with with hands that are weaker than yours, and you can wait for a dry runout to put any significant amount of money in. It, it's just a pretty good spot to play a good number of checkbacks. Um, so let let's talk about this check down line though. Um, so we can we can actually pull up the uh, the hotness window here. Um, so this is turn check check. So you can see out of position on these high boards should they they should be checking like mid eighties frequency, um, and then the lower cards they're they're going to be probing a bit too like a bit more often just. Um, just because the the cards hit out of position a bit a bit better, so uh, they have a bit more range protection, so they can bet a bit more often. Um, but yeah, I mean the the aggregate uh, probe frequency for out of position here on an A side board on this A side board is going to be around seventy three percent, and and that's generally what you would see across like ace low low boards or ace mid low, um, pretty low probe frequency because. On an A-side board, a lot of the checkbacks uh, are, are going to be like high under pairs, you know, like tens through kings. Um, so, uh, and those hands are significantly ahead of the out of position range. Um, and it's not until you, you get like straight or two pair completing cards for the out of position player that uh, they want to put money any amount of money in, any significant amount of money in against a range, dense, and under pairs to the ace. Um, so let's let's just look at this check down. So the the, the checkbacks are going to be a lot of uh, queens and jacks, or uh, kings and queens, excuse me. Uh, and then um, like the good ace x that we check the flop back with. Um, Yeah, and then and then like fives and fours that we check back, and then six x. But we 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 still have a lot of the the weaker ace x. Then we can just make this some low card. Uh, so here, after it checks down to the river, out of position should be, uh, you know, value betting an eight or or even a six. Um. So. One thing you should be thinking about is, okay, I mean, on the turn, it, it's pretty rare that someone would value about a six. So when they get to the river, if they have a, if my opponent has a six, are they going to value bet? Um. So this is this is where the brain solver comes into play. Um, Bluff catching in these lines is uh, definitely an art form, um, but you, you have to think about how thin is my opponent value betting. Um, so out of position should not be bluffing river with a lot of this like double high card type region, like queen 10 off or, or king 9 off, queen 9. Um, this is just because they double block folds because our, our uh, checkbacks on the turn. So if we look at the imposition range, we're going to have a lot of king high and, and like offsuit Broadway stuff like queen jack off or king jack off. Just high cards that show down for, you know, not nothing, but uh, just a tad bit more than nothing. Um, so when they have high cards, they, they should... They should just be giving up. Um, and then when they have a high-low hand, like queen five, queen four, 
Um, the, the, these are the hands that they really want to bluff. Once, once you get down to like 10-5, um, 10-4, these are sort of the hands that are going into the bigger size. Um, and this is just because the ace-x that imposition checks back to bluff catch the river with are more commonly going to be hands with a lower kicker. So like, you know, something like ace-9, ace-10 is going to get here for imposition a lot more than like ace-king, ace-queen. Um, or ace-jack. So that's why you'll see something like 10 high or uh, 9 high get into the big bet range as the, you know, as a as a bluff uh, much more often than like queen 5 or jack 4 or something uh, because they just block less top here. So um, so we're, we're the, the real you know, brain solver comes in into play is what's what what should my what should my opponent be value betting and what do I think they're actually value betting? Um, so if I know my opponent is supposed to value bet a six for a block, um, and I significantly doubt that they're finding these value bets. Um, you know, a, a particular dynamic would be, uh, like if my opponent thinks I'm going to bluff this check down line a lot, um, they're, they're certainly not going to be value betting it on the six X. Um, so, you know, if your opponent is not finding these value bets, but you think they're finding sufficient bluffs for a given size, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, that, that should push you in the direction of a call. Um, but that's an, another big reason I like playing these checkdown lines is my opponent's just not going to be value betting enough. Um, specifically because they are aware that I'm going to be like, I, I'm a relatively aggressive player. So, uh, they're, you know, with their middling hands, they'd rather just check and have an easy check call. Um, like if you have a value bet on the river, and you check and face a bet, typically, you, you know, you have a pretty easy call in theory. Um, and I, I know plenty of guys in my pool are doing this, especially against me. So, um, you know, in a spot like this, if they bet, I'm, I'm bluff catching this this line quite often, just because if they, had, if they had a thin value bet, they're, you know, they're going to be checking those sorts of hands more often than they should. Um, now, another thing to consider is how is my opponent playing the turn? Um, if I face a big bet here, uh, you know, something I'm considering is how often are they value betting a hand that goes into the size on the turn? Um, like on a, on a turn like this, I'm under the assumption against a good number of players that they're going to value bet ace nine, ace 10, ace jack, uh, significantly more often than they should. Um, so when they get to the river, if they like, you know, one and a half X the, the river, I am certainly a bit curious. Um, so in a, in a spot like that, like if they, they bet, yeah, we'll just say pot. Um, so in a spot like this, if I have like a, a deuce or a, a, I mean, a deuce is really good, but, um, you know, a three or a six or something in my hand, um, I'm, I'm going to be bluff catching these hands significantly more often than I would with like, uh, you know, queens or jacks, just because... Assuming that my opponent is value betting too often on the turn, like as a pro with ace nine plus, um, their value bets for this big size are going to be much more condensed to 
hands that interact with the board, like two pairs or, or sets or, you know, um, stuff like that. So I'm going to be bluff catching board pairs significantly more often. I mean, th that's pretty much always the case in, in theory as, as well, but, um, you know, I'm going to be bluff catching these board pairs more often than I should. Um, that's just, that's just because, uh, yeah, I think their value bets are going to be more condensed to stuff that interacts with the board. Um, now, obviously, when you when you check down and, and face face about, you're you're always going to be bluff catching ASX, but um, you know it's it's really this this board pair stuff that we're we're curious about. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's most of what I have to say about this. Let, let's look at a, you know, like a lower wet board. Actually, before we do that, let's let's look at this uh, Ace Queen Deuce Two Tone board. Um, I, I just gave, in position, uh, the one third and and one and a half x overbet size. Um, on, on the two tone board, your overbet size is going to be slightly smaller. If it was like Ace Queen Deuce Rainbow, I think the best size would be. 2x pot, and then you could like sprinkle in some some small bets, but it's mostly just going to be like a really big bet. Uh, so in this line, your your betting strategy is very polar. So you're you're going to be playing checkbacks a lot. Um, now certainly on this board, I I don't think players are uh, you know probing thin for value nearly as often. Um, let's just look at a low bricky run out six. Um, so here, yeah, you can see like out of position is just playing over better check with, you know, ace, uh, ace nine plus is really the threshold, but even that's low frequency. It's really just like ace 10 and two pairs. Um, a lot of the bluffs coming from, so this will be relevant on the, uh, during river play, but the, the bluffs are mainly coming from, uh, flush draws and wheel draws. So check, check, and then, uh, so yeah, in position here where we're just, uh, we're, we're still keeping a relatively polar strategy uh, because the board's so high. Um, should make it like an eight or, or something. So since we're playing so many checkbacks on the block um, and the turn, the imposition player on a board like this is going to retain their equity advantage across the vast majority of runouts. Uh, like on, on this river, uh, the imposition player still has like, you know, a three and a half percent equity advantage. Um, and yeah, that's, that's just because we're checking back so much top pair and second pair. So uh, we, we just have significantly less air in our range because we're not value betting thin on earlier streets. Um, so even even on a bricky run out like this, uh, the out of position player is still going to be checking top air quite a bit uh, just because the in position player is going to bet a lot of their air. Um, so if we check, just pull up the range explorer here. Um, see if we have just complete air. Uh, Basically, jack high or worse, where we're just pure, close to pure betting. Like the the higher the higher like jack ten is is checking back, but pretty much anything weaker is just betting. So out of position shouldn't be value betting that thin. Um. Uh, so in a node where the imposition player is going to retain their equity advantage, uh, specifically in a check down line to the river. Um, it, it, it's going to be a spot where you play a lot of checks, so you have to think about, um, you know, what what made hands make the best check to check raise, or or just a check call. Like, you know, if you have uh, a weak top pair here, here, and you face a slightly bigger bet, you, you're you're not going to check raise uh, one pair. Um, you face pot here, um, you know, 
ace nine, ace ten can check raise, but they're they're close. Um, but if you have like ace ace three, ace four, you're you're just uh, check calling. Um, but it, it it's a spot where your yeah, like your one pair hands. Some of your one pair hands do want to check raise, but not many of them. Um, but a hand like uh, you know eight six for out of position makes quite a good check because you block the hands that in position is going to check back, namely an eight or a six. Um, so this is a really nice check to check raise. Um, so so you want to be thinking about facing a specific size. What exactly is my opponent value betting? Th this is a very common mistake um, that I see where uh, players, you know, it it's more relevant the more polar of a strategy you're facing. Um, like in a spot like this, if your opponent bets like probes one and a half pot into you, um, you're not going to have a linear response. Like, you're going to fold jacks and tens and then call an eight, right? Because hands with an eight in them for your opponent, if he's value betting with an eight in his hand, it's going to be quite a strong hand. Um, so basically, you know, just in a spot like this, the most common overbet for value hands are going to be. Uh, you know, a seven, a a seven, and like ace ten, ace jack. Those are those are going to be some of the best ones, and that's just because it they're good enough to bet that size, but they uh, they're not strong enough to check raise, so they'd rather just bet themselves. So if I face like one and a half times pot, I'm thinking, okay, what are their most common value bets for this size? Um, so here I. You know, in game, I would think. I I, I don't, I am not sure an opponent would or a reg would value bet one and a half times the pot with with the a seven here. Um, but if I did face one and a half pot, I I would say I would think like you know ace nine ace ten ace jack. Uh, and then like. They're they're probably doing this with lower two pair too often, but. I would, I would imagine regs are finding this. Um, like, 8-6 is just a really prime check-to-check-raise uh, check just because of uh, just because of this specific run-out. Like, they're in position of pure checking back a 6 and probably close to pure checking back an 8. Um, an 8 seems close, but... Uh, anyhow, in a spot like this, it... It just makes a lot more sense to value bet like a good top pair as opposed to two pair because in position is going to bet into you quite often on this river uh, because they should be bluffing all of their air. Um, so if I have two pair, I'd much rather just check and check with a hand that blocks their checkbacks like a six or ace eight and, and check to check raise. Um, so if I'm facing one and a half pot, I'm, I'm really just trying to to block, like, the good top pair. Out of position, um, you know, is going to be value betting turn with ace-jack a decent amount, and they don't have any ace-jack suited because that would three-bet pre. So here I'm I'm really thinking about, like, the ace-ten, ace-nine. Uh, ace-ten, ace-nine, ace-seven are, are going to be, like, the best hands for out of position to bet big with. Um, so when I'm bluff catching, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to center my bluff catches around, around that. So, uh, you know, if I have queen jack here, I'm, I'm mostly folding, but if I have like queen nine here, you know, I'm, I'm calling much more often. Um, you know, ace nine is a hand that, you know, makes a nice turn check and then over bet river. So, um, you know. Uh, having a nine in my hand when I'm bluff catching is is quite good. And in a spot, you know, on a high board like this, I, again, similar to what we were talking about earlier, the out of position player shouldn't be bluffing high cards very often because it blocks folds. So like jack high isn't going to be bluffing very often. King high is basically never going to be bluffing. Um, the the bluffs really are just going to come from like 
seven high or, or whatever five high they have. Um, th this wheel stuff is going to be bluffing turn quite often, so they don't have a ton of it. It's really just going to be like seven high. Um, seven five, seven four, nine five, ten four, ten three. Like th these are going to be the main hands they use. Um, so when I'm bluff catching, uh, a board pair, like five like six five six four or something that's going to be quite a bad bluff catch because they shouldn't be bluffing too often uh in this line because they have an equity disadvantage so they don't have a ton of reason to to bet for value so they should be bluffing less so their their uh their bluffs just have to be like pretty pretty prime meaning it unblocks folds which, you know, the lower cards do a better job of. So when I'm bluff catching, facing this big size, you know, I'd rather fold like 6-5, six, 6-4, six, um, and then call like, you know, 9-6, six, 10-6, six, that actually blocks value. Um, King-6 calling, even raising sometimes. Um, So just, uh, you know, some things to think about. Make, make sure uh, you're thinking about the incentive your opponent's range has to bet a specific class of hand, and then construct your bluff catchers around uh, that specific value range. Um, generally, when you face a, a relatively polar strategy and, and your opponent's betting on the bigger side, your blockers become much more relevant uh, because their uh, betting range is condensed to a small number of hands. So uh, your blockers have much more of an effect on the, effic uh, the efficiency of your bluff catch. Um, so, you know, in a, in a spot like this where they're, they're only bluffing like, you know, 10 or 15 combos or, or whatever it is, um, if you have a hand that blocks three of those combos, that's extremely relevant. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, look at a low board now. Okay, so this is 7-3 dudes 2 tone. Um, I'll try to get through this one a bit quicker, but uh, on lower boards, your opponent is going to be value betting turns themselves significantly more often uh, because 7-3 deuce hits your opponent's range a lot more than ace-queen deuce. Um, so the, the equities are going to run a bit closer, and on a lower board, your opponent has more incentive to value bet top pair because it's more vulnerable to overcards. So after it goes check-check and the turn's like another low card, like a six or something, you know, out of positions, um, just the vast majority of the time just value betting a seven themselves um, you know, as opposed to an ace high board where, uh, you know, they, they'd rather just check and let in position bet. Um, so yeah, on a board like this, especially when they have, um, you know, an advantage in like offsuit two pair and straights and, and such, uh, they're, you know, they have a bunch of range protection, so they can, uh, they can value bet relatively thin here. Um. Even a three is, is value betting quite often. Um, that, that's also a function of imposition, uh, value betting their good 7x and the majority of their overpairs on the flop because they need protection. Um, so after a low brick, you know, they can just, uh, they'd rather just value bet themselves and get some value and protection. Um, so after it goes check, check. So the checking range here is going to be a lot of king high ace high. So yeah, and, and so is ours. But uh you know a lot of our lower hands are, are gonna bet. Um so check down and then we'll just make this we'll we'll look through a few rivers. Um so on a low runout like this, uh, it's no longer the case that imposition has retained its equity advantage. 
So the out of position player is going to be uh, value betting quite a bit themselves because the, the check down range for in position is just going to be a lot of ace high, king high, right? Um, like the in position range is just a ton of king high Broadway stuff. Um, you know, the stronger of the ace high. Um, and then, you know, like a, a small smattering of some other stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, so after it checks down, out of position is uh, going to value bet the vast majority of their mid hands themselves. So on a river like this, actually, let, let's let's just very quickly discuss the the turn strategy for out of position. So notice that out of position is is starting to bluff quite a bit of the queen high, the offsuit queen high, especially with uh, uh, relevant suits. Um, so they're going to be bluffing a lot of like queen jack off, queen 10 off, queen 9 off, um, just because this turn is so good for their range. Um, so after they get to the river, the, the hands they have that would bet big for value is going to be a lot of like king jack off. Um, ace jack off does get here, but it's not it's not too relevant um, given that ace jack is... Would, would rather just check to check raise. Um, but it's it's going to be a lot of king jack off and then uh, jack 10, jack 9. Uh, how, however, uh, you know, out of position isn't really bluffing much with king high here. Um, the king high that is worth bluffing on the river out of position is usually just probing turn with themselves. Um, so not much going on here with the king high. Um, the king high they are betting is stuff with a jack in it. Uh, and then the high court hands, like a, a lot of the bluffs here are going to come from queen high. Um, so like queen 10, queen 9 that they check back the turn with, um, or they, that they check the turn with out of position are going to be a lot of the bluffs and then, you know, just like a sliver of whatever air they check the turn with, but not, uh, these lower hands are going to bet turn quite often themselves because they're betting so much for value in general. Um, so the hands, the, the air that gets the river here is going to be a lot of like queen high with a little bit of showdown, you know, like queen 10 off, you know, without a spade or something. It's going to be a lot of the bluffing range. Um, so then if you face this big bet, it's quite good to have a king in your hand uh, because you block the king jack off, king jack suited, and you unblock bluffs because they're never bluffing a king or rarely bluffing a king. Um, and then if you have a queen in your hand, it's, it's not nearly as good. Um, so, you know, if you have ace queen off here, um, it's... It's not that great, but you'll notice that having the queen of spades here is quite good because they probe the turn with like queen jack off, queen 10 off with uh, with a spade. Uh, so then it, when it checks down and you have the queen of spades in your hand, you unblock the queen 10 off, queen 9 off stuff that uh, doesn't have the suit and is waiting until the river to bluff. Um, so you just unblock more bluffs. But... Uh, really, you just want to have a king in your hand. So you'll see, like, ace-king is just pure calling. Um, and it's it's not close. Uh, whereas ace-queen is just mostly folding because it blocks bluffs so, so heavily. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then um, ace-5, ace ace-4 uh, can be decent um, because they, they unblock some bluffs. Um, because a, a lot of the 5x and the 4x are for out of position are going to be bluffing the turn. Um, but uh, that, that's that's really the idea I wanted to point out here was uh, 
thinking about the high card hands that get to the river for out of position and which ones they're bluffing. Um, and we can look at like a 10, 10 more connected and just lower in general. So let's see. So now, yeah, King High is still not bluffing much. And uh, gen generally, a similar spot. One thing you'll actually notice is that the out of position player is betting less on a 10. You can pause the video for a second uh, to give a thought as to why that might be the case. Okay, so the 10, basically out of position is value betting this turn so often that they're going to be bluffing high cards a lot as we previously established. Um, so they're going to be bluffing 10 high a lot more than they will jack high. Um, like queen 10 is going to be bluffing the turn for out of position. Uh, more, uh, like, Queen 10 is going to be bluffing the turn more often than Queen Jack, is what I'm trying to say. Um, same thing with, like, King 10 versus King Jack. Uh, so on the 10, it's not that great of a card, because if they had a 10 in their hand, they're going to be betting the turn more often. Um, it's also a reason why, like, the, the jack is a bit better because they're not bluffing the jack high or, or the like the queen jack as often as they would queen 10. Um, let's look at a queen. Yeah, similar to the jack. But uh, it's just high enough where starting to get decent, decent for in position. Yeah, out of position actually has an equity advantage on the queen. Um, that's just because they're like the out of position check range is pretty condensed here. Um, just meaning that it's going to be pretty tight and, and condensed to like high cards with showdown value. Um, and then, yeah, like ace high. Um, so on the queen, yeah, it's, it's going to be all right. Um, but on the 10, in position, in, or out of position is also bluffing the turn with 9-8, so they don't improve to any streets on the river as well. Um, and yeah, rarely improve to anything strong, so, uh, you know, the betting range here is going to be pretty condensed, and um, so if we face a big bet from, like, you know, queen 10, king 10, So now, something like ace-9, ace-8 are not nearly as good of a bluff catcher. Uh, and now something like ace-queen is, is much better as a bluff catcher. Ace-queen, ace-king. Oh. Because you, you just block so much more value. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's... Pretty much what I have for you guys today. Um, you know, the the big takeaway from this video is, is thinking about uh, r really trying to hone in on these specific made hands that get to the river and the checkdown lines, and when bluff catching, really trying to to target your blockers uh, to block that value uh, and and. More importantly, facing a fuller strategy where your opponent's going to be bluffing a lot is, is unblocking, uh, unblocking bluffs, right? Um, so, I mean, a fundamental principle is just the bigger your opponent bets, they're, they're going to be uh, bluffing more often. So unblocking, unblocking bluffs is, is pretty important um, in addition to blocking value. But uh, yeah, so if you guys have any questions, drop a comment. Uh, please like and su subscribe. That would that would help tremendously. Uh, I, I really do want to grow this channel. Um, you know, a big incentive for me to keep posting regularly is, uh, you know, 
just more more views and uh, subscribers that would be great so uh, but in any event thank you guys for watching and I'll I will see you next time